Hello artists, welcome back. It's Jane. So, if you're like me, and you got a lot of color charts, a lot of supplies, you're thinking, how the hell do I organize them? Here's a quick tip on how I do it. This little guy is made from Perch by Urbio. Now, I don't necessarily have to say that you have to have this. You can basically make your own magnetic board and make this magnetic as well if you want to. But me, I'm lazy, I just bought it. So that being said, what I do is this. You see how this is a hot mess and this is required? And there you have it. There are all of your color charts. It can hold a lot and this is very, very strong. Not a sponsor, I'm just letting you know. I've kind of separated this depending on the medium. And I kept my colored pencil charts. Oop, this one fell off. Colored pencil charts separate from the water soluble and inks and things like that. And then these actually ended up being too large. But basically what I do is if you go to the dollar store and you buy several packs of these book rings and you get a hole puncher, you just take a paper cutter. You basically make a color chart system that will organize everything in a linear style so that you can basically grab that chart whenever you need it. And what I like to do is I put that perch right next to my desk and it's right there for me whenever I need it. And yeah, there's still a little bit of sifting and sorting through it, but it's not how it was before, which was in um, a book, which could basically it was in a Canson mixed media book or a watercolor book or whatever. And I have tons of those, so they would get sort of lost in the mix. And so I just decided, hey, this might be a better way to organize the color charts. And so I've got Derwent Color Soft here. You can see how vibrant those are. I've got obviously the famous Holbein 150 here. And um, here's a quick tip too, is I recommend putting the, just by <laughs> trial and error here, uh, I, I recommend putting the hole somewhere where it's not close to the perforated edge of the paper. You would think that I would know that, but you know, I'm human. So as you can see, um, this particular set of colored pencils has an amazing array of pastels that do not come in any other color set that I've been able to find. And that's why I went out of my way to spend the money on it. They have all these beautiful colors and I will have to take another video where I am kind of zooming in on some of these colors so you can see but you know I think for creating the charts it's especially the colored pencils obviously you can go from the light pressure to the dark and burnishing and see how it goes because I do like to put on thick vibrant color and these layer really really well too like unlike anything else I've seen it's nice to have that at my disposal I think it's useful I think it's a very useful tip so I also put all the skin tones together too because I'm a portrait artist and I use those a lot in my work. So you get the Color Soft and Skin Tone Giants from Lyra, the Prima Marketing water, water Soluble Skin Tones. Normally I would put this with Water Soluble but there's only 12 colors so I just decided to go ahead and put them on the same book ring. The Koh Noor Polycolor Portrait Set which I highly recommend is very very good. And uh, yeah, I do own Prismacolor. I actually do own Prismacolor, uh, but they are Barrel and Eagle Prismacolors, so they're not modern Prismacolors. And basically these are the ones that brought me a lot of joy and a lot of experience in my college years. Basically the Barrel did. Um, even, even the Sanford ones were really nice too, in the beginning. <laughs> so it's really nice to look through, very satisfying. It's nice to have at your disposal, right next to your desk or your studio space, wherever you work. And there's the Tombow Erosion 789s. And um, I just sort of ran, you know, randomly put them in there because um, I'm a strange girl and I have my own method of, it's like one of those things, I think artists all, also will have this sort of inclination to follow what makes sense to them. And it may not make sense to anybody else. That's why sometimes we 
don't always follow the rules and we color outside the lines um, both literally and what's metaphorically and um, you know that's how it is for me sometimes um, <laughs> I've dated guys that they're like, that makes no sense. I'm like, it makes sense to me, okay? <laughs> so anyways, um, I also, with the Dr. P.H. Martins, they actually, uh, I had not made these in the intention to use them the way that I did with the book rings. I had made these a long time ago. And so I have all four sets and they're kind of, you know, bigger charts, and so I actually put them in my Rascot cart by Ikea right next to my desk, so I don't use them in the perch. But yeah, there's some pretty vibrant colors in there. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Gorgeous colors. It's interesting. The reason why I do these charts, and I think you, that a lot of uh, artists will relate to this, is that sometimes, especially with the watercolors and the inks, since they're in, in a concentrated form, and sometimes their pigments are so vibrant that they're actually darker than what they look like on paper. So let me see if I can find an example. So see, it, it, it looks translucent, but it's, it's more concentrated in the bottle. So that's why I find swatching necessary to know what you're working with. And that's true of colored pencils as well. However, with the water-soluble media, it's a little bit more pronounced in that fashion. Um, we got the Jane Davenport inks, which I will talk about in another video, and I am in love with them because they're scented as well. There's 12 of them, and they're not, I mean, my swatches are not the prettiest swatches, but uh, I tell you what, they are amazing. And the Jane Davenport brights. Ah, uh, the Ecoline brush pens, which I am set to review very, very soon. So that's how I kind of use my color charts to file them. So I hope that has helped you. We've got the amazing Albrecht Durer by Faber-Castell, so beautiful and dilutes completely. It's, it's the only watercolor pencil that dilutes completely where it can, you don't see any residual lines or anything. We've got ink tents. Cut the eye candy, look at the eye candy, look how pretty. I love Derwent there, they're like mad scientists of pencils. Also, another one that is a little too pigmented in the palette, and this is why I swatched them out. I actually compared the Magello Mission Gold with the Shinhan chart, which is, Shinhan is a lot more affordable, and they're, they're very similar in a lot of ways. But you can see the reason that I, it's nice to have this on hand is because a lot of the darker colors, like the darker blues and the greens and the browns, they're so dark that whenever you see them in the palette, they're so concentrated and beautiful that I can't really always tell exactly <laughs> how it's gonna turn out, the pigment. So, you know, that's why this wonderful palette is so messy and I need to clean it. This is the watercolor Sennelier Open Stock. So beautiful, I love Sennelier. Their watercolor is honey-based and it's so gorgeous. And yeah, I probably should redo these open stock ones. As said before, I did not actually, these particular charts were not done with the intentions of having them on the book ring. It's just something that I came up with later on. Uh, that's Holbein, Pelican, Pelican Opaque. These are, this is a custom watercolor palette. This, these are uh, Holbein Artist Wash and just some random colors that I like. And yeah, there's another one of Shinhan. We've got Brunzeal color expression, watercolor pencils, the super color watercolor pencils that I have, the open stock, and the art grip pencils. Actually, I think they're Gold Faber by Faber Castell, and then they changed the name to the art grip pencils, which is a really good student watercolor pencil. Here's the Lyra Aqua Color 24. Very nice, and I have a love affair with this particular color. It's called Night Green. I used it in a David Bowie portrait. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Beautiful dry and wet. And then the Neo Colors from Car and Dosh. Oh my goodness, they are so pretty. Look at them, look at them. So satisfying, so beautiful. So many colors. Ooh, are the tones. Yes, I should do an ASMR video. 
<laughs> I could talk to you softly while I sort through colors. <laughs> or give you art tips while I'm whispering. I'm such a goofball. Oh my goodness. Can't take yourself too seriously. Can't take life too seriously either. So that's that. And I hope that this has helped you. Now, as I get all these together, back in their respective spots, right in this perch, please let me know if you have a particular way of organizing your charts. I'm open to suggestion, and I'm always one of these people that kind of likes to change things around in my art studio, so uh, nothing is ever really truly fixed and ever stays the same. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. And I will see you next time. Keep creating. <laughs>